Hello and welcome to today's Wednesday in the Word. Well, over the last couple of years, there seems to have been a growth in the phrase in these days of fill in the blank uncertainty. So it could be in these days of economic uncertainty or political uncertainty or global sustainability uncertainty, which I'm not quite sure is correct, but nevertheless, the idea of uncertainty seems to be prevailing within our world. What does God's word say in response to that? Well, Psalm 125, part of the Song of Ascents, addresses some of that and gives us a wonderful picture of who the Lord is, how we are to respond, and how we can pray and think within such a context. Here it is. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous stretch out their hands to do wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are upright in their hearts. But those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. Well, we can split this psalm up into three different sections. First of all, there's a picture. Uh, Secondly, there is a principle. And thirdly, we have a prayer. First of all, then, verses one and two, we have a picture of stability and security. God's people, those who trust in the Lord, says the psalmist, are like Mount Zion, like the holy hill on which the temple in Jerusalem is built. But not only is there a picture of stability, there is also here a picture of security, eternal security. Because in verse 2, the psalmist focuses not so much on God's people, but on the Lord himself and says that as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. It's a beautiful picture, isn't it? of how the city of Jerusalem, surrounded by hills and mountains around it, uh, has that sense of security. Well, how much more does the Lord give us that sense of security, not simply now, but always? Eternal security. What a wonderful reminder in a world of uncertainty. And that leads to the principle which we see in verse 3. It's quite simple. It's that those who think that they're in charge but aren't trusting in the Lord, well, they won't be around forever. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. Scepter is this idea of rule. So those who think they're in charge, those who think that they are ruling, Well, ultimately, they will not be in charge. They will be overthrown. But we're told that the Lord will overthrow those who are opposed to him with a specific reason. It's also there in verse 3. Lest the righteous stretch out their hands to do wrong. So the Lord is protecting his people, even in those circumstances which seem so uncertain, when those who are living as if God is not their ruler, those who are in charge are living as though God is not their ruler. Well, they will not last forever, says the psalmist. Now, of course, that in and of itself raises a huge question. Who do we say is ultimately in charge of our lives? Who rules you? And that leads us into the third heading. First of all, we've got this uh, wonderful picture of stability and of security. Then there's this principle that we've looked at in verse 3. And then in verses uh, 4 and 5, we have a prayer. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good. Lord, please would you do me good today? Please would you help me to know your blessing in my life? 
And of course, the wonderful truth about following Jesus Christ is when we put our trust in him, he's with us. He's for us, not against us. And so there is also a warning in verse 5 that those who are opposed to the Lord will ultimately be overthrown. But those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evildoers. Jesus calls this hell, this judgment of God upon those who are opposed to him. And of course, this prayer, Lord, please do good to us, ultimately finds its answer in Jesus Christ. Will you trust in him today? Are you following him? Because when we do that, we can pray what the psalm concludes with. Peace be upon Israel. Lord, may we know your peace today. Please, would you help us to know that peace as we know the joy of salvation, our sins forgiven, our conscience cleansed, our hearts healed, the guilt dealt with as we put our trust in Jesus Christ, the one who dies for us, the one who establishes peace for us, the one who provides ultimate and eternal security. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful psalm. Please would you help us today to know your peace as we rest in Jesus Christ afresh. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Take care. God bless you.